Hello and welcome to this tech talk on the convergence of Autopipe's nonlinear analysis engine. My name is Luke Andrew and I am a senior application engineer with Bentley's Pipe Stress and Vessel Group. Let's jump right in to an introduction of a nonlinear analysis. There are two different kinds of analyses, linear and nonlinear. Characteristics of a linear analysis are the pipe properties are constant. The deflections are small, and there is elastic deformation, which means the pipe goes back to its original shape when it's unloaded. So, for example, for every pound of force you put in, you get one inch of displacement, and for two pounds of force, you will get two inches of displacement, and so on. Characteristics of a nonlinear analysis are the pipe properties change over time, there are large deflections, and the plastic deformation can occur, which means that the pipe is permanently deformed when it's unloaded. So the relationship between how much force causes a set amount of displacement changes, and that is why it's called nonlinear. When with a nonlinear analysis, there are many iterations of the analysis in iterations of the analysis in order for the model results to converge to a solution. Sometimes the model does not converge and there are many things you as a user can do to help get your results to converge. Here are some possible solutions for your non-convergence. Judging by the location and the type of error, you can modify or remove the support. Models with soil, you can modify the soil properties and or modify the maximum soil space setting. You can run the model as a static analysis by unchecking the gaps friction soils. You can run the analysis and look at the support reactions for abnormally large values that are fighting each other. And you can also modify the nonlinear analysis tolerance settings, i.e. the displacement tolerance, the force tolerance, the friction tolerance, which is a ratio, or the friction scale factor. So now we're going to go through the details of the nonlinear analysis settings dialog. The first setting is the maximum iterations which determines the program's stopping criteria. For the maximum iterations, 15 iterations should be sufficient. Generally, if the model does not converge after 50 iterations, a solution cannot be found and reviewing the model log file will show bearing force and displacement convergence errors at a particular support, which may be the reason for the non-convergence. Next, each tolerance setting will determine the wiggle room for the convergence. In short, the larger each tolerance value is, the less iterations are required. The trade-off is the potential for inaccurate results. So the smaller each tolerance value is, the more iterations are required, but the results will converge to a more accurate value. Failure to converge after 15 iterations will usually indicate that the system is unusually sensitive in some respect. So in this event, the system model should be checked for proper definition, including support locations, and that the convergence tolerances are appropriate for the magnitude of the force and displacements being calculated, i.e. the displacement, force, and friction tolerances may have to be, they may have been set too tight. If the analysis does not converge after your set number of maximum iterations, a dialog will appear that will ask you if you want to continue iterating. Clicking yes will basically continue iterating for another set number of maximum iterations, so you can see how close your model was to converging, or you can click no, saying that you do not want to continue. Hitting cancel will just cancel your analysis, so you can then go into your model and modify it as needed. But if you just say no, you do not want to continue iterating, you will be given an opportunity to view an ASCII text file, usually named the system name.log, where the system name is the piping system name. That log file is created to help you diagnose why your model is not converging. This file can be used to identify the supports or support which failed to converge. Opening the system name log file that was created and scroll down the, to the error summary for nonlinear supports. Just above this line, you can see detailed information for why your model did not converge. You will see the load case causing the problem, the values calculated and compare those to the tolerance settings, and the node point where the non-convergence occurred. 
With the ASCII, the ASCII text file, you can see what is causing your non-convergence. But now we will go through the details of each tolerance to help you understand what each setting controls. If a support has an initial gap defined, the exact gap magnitude will usually not be known during an iteration. During the analysis, if a gap closes but the amount of overlap is not greater than the displacement tolerance, the overlap is ignored and the gap is assumed to be closed. In effect, a gap equal to the nominal gap plus the tolerance is assumed. The value entered at this prompt is also used in thermal load cases to decide whether or not the initial gap is small enough to ignore. If the initial gap is smaller than the tolerance, it is assumed that no gap is present and the support with no gap will be used. Since a nonlinear analysis does not necessarily converge exactly, the force tolerance is used to check the convergence of a load case. The force tolerance is used in two ways. If a gap is assumed to be closed but develops a tensile force, the closed assumption is incorrect and further iteration is indicated. However, if the tensile force is less than the force tolerance, the error is ignored. That is, it is assumed that the tensile force is so small that it is negligible and no further iteration is needed. If friction is present, the nominal friction force is the bearing force multiplied by the friction coefficient. During the iterative solution, the calculated friction force will not equal the nominal force exactly. If the difference is less than the force tolerance, the calculated force is assumed to be su sufficiently accurate. If the force does not exceed the value at any support, the analysis is assumed to have converged. The friction tolerance, FT, is used to check analysis convergence. The nominal friction force value, FF nom, is the bearing spring force multiplied by the friction coefficient. If the calculated friction force value, FF cal, is within the specified ratio of the nominal value for all supports, the analysis is assumed to have converged. That is, the following must be true for the convergence. Friction coefficients for two materials in contact are rarely known precisely. In addition, vibration can re relieve friction. Therefore, in order to determine the importance of friction effects on a system model, analyses may need to be performed with smaller or larger friction coefficients at each support. That this friction factor has been provided to facilitate the modification of defined friction coefficients at all supports at the same time. Each friction coefficient is multiplied by this scale factor, allowing for friction parameter studies without changing the properties of each support individually. Buried piping systems have their own tricks to assist with convergence. The first trick is to try using non-zero K2 values in order to avoid unlimited displacements. Using K larger K2 values temporarily say for example K2 is equal to K1 divided by a thousand or so, it can help you see if P1 values are sufficient by checking displacements. By setting K1, K2, P1 to 0 0.01 newtons per meter and 0 0.001 meters per millimeter per millimeter, the model should converge with no problem. You may need to add concentrated or distributed weight to submerged pipe to prevent it from uplifting. In practice, concrete mats are added in some cases. You can also try using V-stops at a reasonable spacing that will make it pass the sustain stress check. You may have to use a large friction factor, 0.5 or up to 0.1 for these supports. And that is it, folks. Hopefully, these tricks will assist you in your future designs to get your analysis to converge. If you have any questions regarding this webinar, please reach out to myself and our team of Bentley experts on the Bentley Communities Forum listed on the webpage for this webinar or visit our forum on communities.bentley.com. In closing, I just want to draw your attention to a great resource for anyone wanting to learn more about the Bentley Pipe Stress products. 
Our YouTube channel has a variety of videos covering all aspects of our products and more are being added each week. So if you're interested to see what's new or how to use a certain feature, subscribe and search the Bentley Pipe Stress Analysis channel. And if there is something you wish were covered, but it isn't, please drop us a line. We are always looking for ideas for additional content.